hello, hello, and welcome to Financial Confidence. I am your illustrious host. Is, is that I say illustrious? Okay, that's okay. I'm your host, Lynn Demons. <laughs> and you are listening to Financial Confidence here. We thank you so much for tuning in at WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters. Go on over to WYTV7.org. Don't hesitate. Do it right now. Leave a donation because we're doing what we're called to do. That's to enhance the kingdom. But we're helping you over here at Financial Confidence. Make your money, keep your money, and grow your money so you can do what you're called to do. That's to build generational wealth and leave an inheritance for your children's children. We're basing this on solid biblical principles, starting with Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, I said it. He said it too. It's in the Bible. Go check it out. Matthew 6 and 33. It's in your Bible if you didn't tear it out. We also suggest, recommend, highly recommend that you commit this prayer to memory so that you can do what you're called to do. If you will, just take a moment and bow with me. Lord, help us to value the things in this world that are really valuable. That's our relationship with you, our lives, and our families. Help make us responsible stewards of your financial resources. And let us trust your holy word, the eternal glory of our son Jesus. In his name, pray. Amen. All right, guys. So today's show is you are what you repeatedly do. Yeah, I said it. You are what you repeatedly do. So I want you to think about this for a moment, and I'm going to read this poem to you briefly before we actually get into those steps that you can take. But this poem is entitled, Who Am I? I am your constant companion. I am your greatest helper or your heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I am completely at your command. Half of the things you do, you might as well turn over to me, and I will do them quick and correctly. I am easily managed, but you must be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done. And after a few great people, and alas, of all failures as well. Those who are great, I have made great. Those who are failures, I have made failures. I'm not a machine, though. I work with the precision of a machine plus the intelligence of a person. You may run me for profit or run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will place the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I will destroy you. Who am I? I am habit. So I'm sharing that with you today, guys, because your habits are what you repeatedly do. And that's the title of this segment of Financial Confidence. You are what you repeatedly do. So how do you now move to the place that you are getting beyond this, that's the basic definition of insanity, right? Doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. So whatever it is that you repeatedly do is who you essentially are. So what are the things that you are doing and do you like who you are? And if you don't like who you are and what those things that you're continually doing, you don't like the position or the situation that you're currently in, then what are some of the things that you can do to change? That's what we'll be talking about today on financial confidence. But as we're having this conversation, I bet you're sitting there saying, now how is it that we're having a financial confidence conversation? But this is, a, we're talking about money, but this is supposed to be a Christian broadcast. This is supposed to be a biblically based show. Yeah, we started it out Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of, of heaven, right? Seek ye first, yes. That's what we're to do. Seek him first, and all these things will be added unto us. But I also want to know, did you know, guys, that in the Bible, and I have it written down because I went to look it up myself, the Bible mentions money more than any other single topic, okay? Now, that's what we talk about. That's what I call financial maturity. You have to get to a point to where you're able to talk about money in these different situations and circumstances so that you're able to do those things that you're called to do. That's called being a good steward, y'all. Just in case you didn't know, I thought I'd let you in on that one. A good financial steward. And a good financial steward leaves an inheritance for his children's, and chil for his children's children. I didn't make that up, y'all. 
now, but go check it out in Proverbs 13 and 22. So you have to teach the proper way to manage the proper stewardship, the spiritual stewardship, if you will, of your, your monies, of your finances, and not only teaching it for you so that you learn it, but so that you can also transfer that information over to your little ones. Yes, you are raising children. You are raising those financial geniuses, whether they're your children, your grandchildren, the neighborhood children. It doesn't matter, guys. It takes a community, right? We all know that it takes a community. So take that community. Go on over and check us out. Raising a financial genius, whether you're good with money or not, those are available at DemonsEnterprise.com. Go check it out. But what I want to share with you today, guys, you are what? you repeatedly do. So what are those things that you repeatedly do? Are you repeatedly, uh-oh guys, I'm sorry about that. Huh, sorry, I had something in my eye. Uh, T TMI, that's okay. Guys, you are what you repeatedly do. So how do we get to the place where we can transition beyond this poverty mindset, if you will, to a, a mindset of abundance? And in thinking about this, these keys that I'm going to share with you, these strategies, these practical things that you can do, not only do they apply in your money, but they apply in all other areas of your life as well, your relationships, your health. Um, think about it, how you can take this and transition it to different areas of your life, because ultimately it's about making your money, keeping your money and growing your money so you can do what you're called to do, yes? I said it, so you can do what you're called to do. That's to build generational wealth and leave an inheritance for your children, children. So let's look at this a little in a little bit more detail. You are what you repeatedly do. So how do you now transition? The number one thing that I would say, in order to get out of any type of rut, whether it's a financial rut, a relationship rut, a, a health and wellness rut, what you ultimately need to do is position yourself to learn more. Read a book. So those of you who follow me on social media, you know that I take the time out every morning to actually go through, write my goals out. And I have 10 goals that I'm working on. I write those goals out to make sure that I'm staying on top of, I'm holding myself accountable, if you will, to reaching those goals. And one of my goals happens to be that I will have 50 books read by the 1st of December, okay? And then looking at that, I, I've gone through and I've calculated, okay, if I have to have 50 books read by then, that's almost five books a month. So I've set myself up so that I can make sure that I meet that goal, whether it's getting audio books for when I drive from place to place or actually reading a book when I do have the time to read, I've set that schedule up so that I can take advantage of those opportunities to get those 50 books in by December 1st. Same thing that you must do, guys, when you're learning more, you have to ultimately start reading. Read a book every two to three days. You, there's a feeling that you need to know more or there should be a feeling that you need to know more. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing these same things over and over and you wouldn't be stuck in that rut. See, the problem with being stuck in a rut is that you can dig and dig and dig and you're so far down in the hole that you don't even recognize the fact that you're down in that hole. And you don't know whether or not that hole is going to work unless you down in it anyway. So what you have to do now is position yourself to learn more about your situation. What, it, what are the things that you're doing that you don't know? Because it's impossible for us to know everything about everything, regardless of how smart we are, regardless of the fact that I graduated magna cum laude, it doesn't mean that I know everything, right? Now, I know a lot of things, but I know that I know that I know that I do not know everything. So I take it upon myself to ensure that I continue to learn. And learning more, of course, means reading. There are so many different opportunities today. I take that reading. I, in addition, to, I read my Bible, of course, first and foremost. That's the most important book that you will ever read. That goes without saying, but I thought I'd throw it in there today. That goes without saying that the number one book in your life, of course, is your Bible. But then you also read other books that are also going to enhance you, support you as you develop because you are what you repeatedly do. The number two thing, 
that I highly suggest and recommend for those of you who are transitioning, who want to go beyond the things that you've done in the past because your past should not define your future you. Let me say that again, your past does not define your future you. So what your number two thing, the number two thing is add value before you ask for something in return. Yeah, I said it. You need to be able to add value to these different situations because there's never a lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness on our parts as individuals that keeps us from being or keeps us from moving forward. Let me say that again. There is never a lack of resources, no matter how dire the situation looks to you, no matter how down in the dumps you may feel, no matter how, like uh, Robert Candelera says, you'll say yes to the dress, yes to your mess, and yes to the stress before you say yes to your best. God, there is never a lack of resources. And I need you to hear me and hear me well. There's only a lack of resourcefulness. So what are you going to do with what you have that's going to allow you to propel to your next level. Remember, you are what you repeatedly do. So what are some of those things now that you can look at, reflect upon in your life that you've done differently that can now position you, right, to do better, to be greater, to be a better financial steward of those resources? The number three thing I want to share with you today on financial confidence is to, you should always constantly work to improve yourself because your reputation, everything that you do, that is a reflection of you. And what you have to do is note that you fail in many cases because, it, because you started out wrong. That's the reason you started out wrong because you didn't completely understand that situation before you started out on it, right? Or when you started out, it was one way and then things changed mid midway and you didn't make the change. You kept going in that original path on that original path or position that you started out on and you didn't adjust during the mid, you didn't adjust right there in the middle of the situation. You didn't make the shift. So you have to constantly work to improve on yourself, constantly work to improve by improving upon yourself, you now improve upon your situation. And by improving upon yourself, guys, we say this over and over every single show, you must be intentional in the action steps that you are taking to move forward, whether that's in your budgeting, in your saving, in your investing, in your education, no matter what the case may be, there are simple steps that you have to take, but ultimately remembering at all costs that you seek ye first the kingdom of God. See, once you seek the kingdom of God, it gives us information about how to handle each of our situations and circumstances that we encounter. But oftentimes we're not even aware of the fact that that's right there for us and we miss the boat. So you must be constantly improving, guys, because you are what you repeatedly do. Yeah, I said it. You are what you repeatedly do. So what am I going to do today, guys? Make sure that you go back and, and pay particular attention. And I hope you were taking notes as we were going through this situation because this is invaluable information for you today on this journey because no one is born knowing how to save and invest. Is something that you simply must learn. You must learn how to make your money, keep your money, and grow your money so that you are called to do, that you can do the things you're called to do. That's to leave an inheritance for your children's children, y'all. That's what I'm saying. So be successful on this journey. Take those strategies. Just want to close out by reminding you, who am I? I am your constant companion. I am your greatest helper or your heaviest, bur heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I'm completely at your command. Half of the things you do, you might as well turn over to me and I will do them quickly and correctly. I am easily managed, you must be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done and after a few lessons, I will do it automatically. 
I am the servant of all great people and alas, all failures as well. Those who are great, I have made great. Those who are failures, I have made failures. I am not a machine though. I work with the precision of a machine plus the intelligence of a person. You may run me for profit or run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will place the world at your feet. Be easy with me and I will destroy you. Who am I? I am habit. Guys, I thank you so much for tuning in for this episode of Financial Confidence. Just remember, you are what you repeatedly do. So go out there and take the steps that you need to take to make your money, keep your money, and grow your money so you can do what you're called to do. That's to build generational wealth and leave an inheritance for your children's children. I'm Lynn Demons, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yeah, I said it, America's number one. I want to invite you over to our website. Check us out at demonsenterprise.com. That's demons, no demons here, D-E-M-M-O-N-S. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Demons Speak, and I'm Lynn Demons on LinkedIn if you happen to be over there. Guys, I appreciate you so much for tuning in for this show. If financial confidence has been entertainment, education, anything for you, make sure you share this video out, but also make sure you contribute to the cause. Go over to WYTV7.org and donate. Yes, WYTV7 is a nonprofit Christian-based organization, and we'll be hosting financial literacy workshops in the Charlotte, North Carolina area this April. So we would love for you to support, to sponsor, donate, your time and your dollars to this great cause. Go over to wytv7.org to get more information. Also, if you would like to reach out and connect with me, email me at lynn at demonsenterprise.com. I'll be more than glad to have those conversations with you. Also, if you are a person who is ready to share your story, have that courageous conversation about life and finances, we are always looking for great, inspiring, motivational stories to share here at Financial Confidence. So we invite you to connect with us. Go ahead and schedule some time to get on the show so we can get your message out because we have to get do this together. One plus one is two, but one and one is 11. Let's collab collaborate on this opportunity, y'all. Go to WYTV7.org. I'm Lynn Demons. We appreciate you so much for joining in.